The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Debugging TV and its first weekly program called Frames. Its name is derived from stack frames, where debuggers catch bugs. We use byte-sized chunks for every episode. Eight slides for eight minutes and eight minutes for questions and answer session. You can type your questions during the episode. If I can't answer particular questions now, I then post answers on the website debugging.tv. The first frame episodes are about symbol files. To show you live memory dump analysis, I need a program that crashes and its corresponding process memory dump. Citrix 2 test windows error reporting is a good example. Without symbol files, a memory dump is just a binary file. To help a debugger to interpret these files, we need also symbol files that contain tables with address values and their corresponding symbolic names. When we open a memory dump, the debugger uses such pairs from program executable PE header tables. For example, import and export tables that are present in loaded modules. It just happens that the given address value is close to some symbol value from such symbol tables, unless some imported function was really called. However, this is not what we want. And uh, most of the code, most of the written code calls function that are never exported and their name address pairs are not included in built and linked modules. In such cases, we need additional symbol files even for operating system components. If we download such symbol files from Microsoft Symbol Server, we get a different picture because address values will be compared with more refined symbol tables and the debugger might be able to correctly interpret call stack data. So I quickly show you I load the dump file What I do, I type, type K command, and what we see here, we see all these names are taken from imported functions, imported exported functions. For example, what we can try to do here is to do to list all symbols before we load it or as symbol files. You see plenty of them are already exported. And for example, this one can be found in the list. However, before, because some symbols are not loaded, Some commands will not work, for example, to list thread environment block. What we do now, 
we specify Microsoft Symbol Server. And reload symbol files. Now, the output is much better. What we also see, this warning, has disappeared. from the stack trace this is because we are able to get additional symbol address associations for system modules however we still see test windows error reporting module and we see also that its symbol file was not used and we also see huge offsets and no function names. So this is illustrated on this slide as well. And uh, in the box to the right, there are some additional commands to try. Now, we explicitly supply the location of a symbol file for test window S error reporting. So what we do, we do sim path Then we reload symbols, and now we get much better stack trace with all test windows error reporting program functions, normal offsets, and even some source code links. If we type KL capitalize, we get cleaner stack trace without source code path. Now I show you that we need to be conscious when looking at addresses and corresponding symbols. Symbol values are associated automatically by a debugger. For example, when analyzing raw stack data, we see crypt base address and might wonder if any encryption was involved and whether it was a function call at all. So, let's dump raw stack data for the current stack. For example, we see this address and symbol. Here it looks like a global variable, according to some naming convention. But suppose we don't know anything about naming conventions. We can double check any such symbol by interpreting it as a return address and trying to disassemble backwards. If we see a function call, we can infer with the high probability that in the past, that code was executed. So if we take this address,
and this symbol we see all zeros. However, if you look at that data again, we find, for example, this symbol and this address. And if we disassemble it, we see call here. The side box also shows Unicode data on Rostec, like here. Sometimes, if such addresses incidentally coincide with addresses, with address space of some loaded module, we see symbols as well. However, they are merely coincidental. Here I listed some patterns related to symbols that you can get from Crash Dump Analysis Portal. And when you get PDF file, download this PDF file, you can, you can go to these links. Thank you for watching this episode. In the next episode, we continue with symbols and cover symbol troubleshooting. Please later check out the slides and recorded video from debugging.tv and also come back to register for further episodes. Now I see you ask some questions. The first question is, how often will be these episodes? I plan to do it at least once a week. Sometimes maybe once in two weeks. Another question, is it possible to change a symbol file, PDB, in cases where the PDB doesn't fully match the binary file? Okay, that I should cover in the next episode. Another question is about whether MS Office symbols are available. I'm not aware of this. If you know the link, please send it. And there is another question. Uh, are you planning to leave a session on kernel mode debugging? I might cover some brief topics uh, during these episodes. Okay, if you have more questions, please type them and uh, I later compile and uh, create a page for this episode. I will also put uh, these slides on debugging.tv so you could later practice with symbol files yourself. Actually the last final exercise because I loaded symbols what I do I repeat this command x this kernel 32, after I loaded additional symbol files for kernel 32 module, and we could see that the list of symbols is much longer than it was before we specified Microsoft Symbol Server. That's why we got much better stack trace after we specified after we use that command simfix, if you remember the first command that we used. And also, don't forget 
that you can also use this symbol search path dialog box. Okay, thank you very much for attending the first frame episode.